Yeah. What do you see, Joe? Garbage. She's cooked. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for joining us again. After the last video, I kind of realized I need to do a bit more of an explanation as to what's going on, because um, I kind of left everybody hanging. You saw us racing. And then the last shot you saw was that one I showed you in the start of the video where I just had the oil filter cut apart and uh, I could see all kinds of metal in there. That's what you saw in the filter was a bunch of metal. That's the last thing you want to see in your oil filter. Uh, this video, I kind of thought I would show people cutting a filter apart. Um, well, I'm just going to use that same one I have. It's already cut apart, but I can show you the dissection of it and then what I think I see in there um, because a lot of people know what that is. It is obviously bearing material, either crank uh, mains or rod bearings, most likely. Um, but a lot of people hit me up and they didn't quite know what they were looking at. So we'll take apart that filter. I'll show you that stuff inside. Um, and we'll talk about where we go from there. And I got some footage too of draining the last bit of oil out of the pan I used to catch it. And again, in there you see some metal flakes. So I'll show you guys that too. It's all stuff that you kind of want to be aware of doing oil changes, especially if you're racing a car. If you're racing a car and you're running it to, you know, 65, 67, 100 RPM, cutting your oil filter apart during an oil change is critical because you can catch stuff earlier. I did not catch this as early as I'd like to, but you kind of saw how it transpired. I was racing. Uh, car started going slower and then you know I tried doing some stuff in between races I didn't see any metal in the oil on the first oil change I did but then we went racing again picked up a sound on the way home after I did three did three hits picked up a sound on the way home and then that's when I drained the oil again cut the filter apart and found what we saw ultimately the engine just eating itself alive so we'll throw to that first bit of footage of uh, the pan itself. So this is the kind of the first indicator you would see of an internal issue. Drain your oil from your motor into a pan and as you're draining the pan into like some bottles for uh, to head it to recycling or whatever, that's where you would see metal in the bottom of that drip pan. So we'll throw to that footage. This is kind of first indicator. They call it panning for gold, but it is not the gold you want to find. So there you can see all kinds of little flakes in the bottom of that pan of that old oil definitely not what you want to see but really no surprise there yeah there you go that's what they call panning for gold that's all bearing material that's gnarly Draining the last bit of the oil out there, and you can just see all kinds of material sitting in the bottom of that pan. Nasty. Okay, so you've seen what's in the bottom of the pan now. Let's go ahead and get into dissecting that oil filter. Okay, so now here is our infamous oil filter. This is the same one that came off the car. Um, this is a K&N filter gold series. They're really nice. Uh, Engine Masters just did a thing on these showing they have excellent flow and excellent catch capabilities and they got a little uh, additional thing in the bottom I'll show you guys too which uh, is a really nice little feature to help catch some extra debris. So if you never cut one of these things apart um, you can use tin snips to do it or you can use an oil filter cutter. That's what I did. I got mine from Summit. It worked really really well. Uh, I suggest that. Don't use a hacksaw or something because you'll just add debris into the filter. But basically you just go around it, opens it like a can opener, and then you get to the dissection part. So top comes off, you can see uh, drip holes, how it attaches to the motor there, little rubber seal, and then you can pull the actual filter itself out. So there you can see, it's a lot like an air filter. Um, a lot of guys will even cut these apart and go right inside, peel them apart and look for debris inside here as well. Which is interesting, I don't, oh uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see inside there, there's debris as well. A lot of guys peel these things right apart or even cut them. Really go through that guy to find stuff, but 
everything I needed to see was right in the bottom. Here is that extra little feature. It's an extra little catch. Um, you can already see bearing debris all over this thing. Uh, this guy just sits in the bottom there and it helps just catch extra stuff though. So I do like that fi uh, feature on these K&Ns. Really cool, but immediately you see bearing material. Try to dump some of this out here. Yeah, oh my God. It's just, yeah. There you go. So again, that's all bearing material. That's upsetting. So, yeah. Crank or rod, I don't know which. Um, we're gonna figure that all out in the main dive section, but right here, this is exactly what you never wanna see in your filter. This means complete engine rebuild. Even this coming just out of it is just like, uh, oh my God. I actually didn't even know it was this bad. I haven't done this. I haven't touched this filter since the initial time I showed you guys on camera. Yeah. It is just completely full. And that's why you cut your filters apart and take a look inside because you just never know. Wow. Okay, so where do we go from here? So we know that the internals of the motor pretty much destroyed. Um, it does just kind of set in motion what we plan to do this winter anyway. Unfortunately, I was hoping to save that short block, um, but we're gonna probably end up using that block. Crank and rods are probably destroyed. Uh, that's fine, they were just stock stuff anyway. So the winter plan now is we're gonna go ahead and build that 408. Wanted to do that for a while, we we're gonna do it anyway. This just kind of moves us ahead in the program a little bit. And uh, I do got trans brake stuff coming still too. So trans is gonna be coming out. Motor's obviously gonna be coming out. Um, you can see I've already started prepping it and I kinda actually test fit something earlier. So I might make a video on that too. Uh, but we're gonna get this thing out of here, get it up to my buddy Pete's place, do a complete dissection on it and then send the short block away and uh, get a really nice 408 short block built. Use what we can out of this motor, same heads. Uh, probably gonna go bigger cam make it a little spicier, get the thing back on the dyno. That's the new plan. So I'm stoked for that. I'm, you know, this is upsetting that this happened this way, but it's a learning lesson as well. This all probably comes back to that oil pressure issue that I've seen with this motor the entire time we've had it. Um, we saw it on the dyno right away. Um, saw it when we were racing. Guys were pointing out in the video that it would drop pressure and ultimately it came back and bit us in the ass. Uh, if we weren't racing the car, it would have been fine. We we're racing it though, it's what it's for. So just sets us in motion for winter. So do stay tuned for all that. I um, wanna thank you guys for watching. We got lots more stuff coming on. I got parts ordered. We got a plan. We're good to go, don't worry. We'll be back stronger than ever. Thanks for watching, see you guys soon.